Isn't this the cutest little baby kangaroo? Hang, Hang on, on for the loop! Four, three, two, one. Liftoff! We have a liftoff! I'm Ricky! I'm Jamie! Ricky, it's December! Oh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the season of peace and presents. The season of good cheer, cookies, and... Otters! Otters! Okay, we'll get to that. But first, before we get distracted by all the hustle and bustle of the season, we have postcards. Yes, we asked you what you wanted to hear about here on The Loop Show, and a lot of you asked the same question. Who is God? This is a question that people have been asking since the beginning of time. So let's start with the big picture. Welcome, I'm Professor Benjamin Monroe, but my friends call me Professor Lexicon. <laughs> I'm an entomologist, which means I love to study words. <laughs> the fascinating thing about words is that, what is this? Uh, it's for your sidekick. What's up, pizza slices? It's your boy, Ed, AKA Scooch. Shout out to my homies at Dig Big Words. What is this? They thought you needed a hip young sidekick. Yeah, cause words can get crunchy. So I'm gonna take your glitter and make it shine, man. Well, as I was saying, Ed. Call me Scooch. I'm not doing that. Today we'll be discussing the omnis. Like omnivores? And that's a dino that eats absolutely everything, bruh. Plants, hamburgers, rubber tires, etc. The root word omni is a Latin term meaning all. Take the word omnipresent. This is a compound word of two Latin words, omni and praisings. It means all the presents, like I got everything on my Christmas list. No, it means all here, or always here, close to everything. The word omnipresent is a word used to describe something that is unlimited with respect to space. Whoa. Take the word omnipotence. Okay, I will. This is a compound word translated as all power. The word omnipotence is used to describe something that is unlimited in power that never gets exhausted. I think my friend Dil Dylan has that. Which brings us to my favorite omni, omniscience, which means all knowledge. The word is used to describe something that is infinite in knowledge of all things inside and outside of time. Take it from me. Don't mess around with being outside of time. These three words, omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, are words most often used to describe God. God is unlimited in size, infinite in power, and all knowledge. That's awesome. Awesome. That's a perfect word to describe it. You know, the original meaning of the word awesome is an overwhelming feeling of reverence and admiration or fear. We've reduced it to a slang term, meaning impressive. But when we truly think about how God is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, we can fully stand in awe. It is awesome. Tips. Words are dazzling. Use them with care. Yeah, bro, words are like the best. God is bigger than words. Yeah, it can be difficult to kind of describe the creator of everything. From gigantic galaxies. Eeny, bee specks of dust. From a mighty whale. To the adorable sloth. Everybody, this is our friend Melissa with the sloth. Hi. Oh. This is Sid, and Sid oh, is a two-toed sloth. Here you go, Sid. Oh, there you go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, now, shoot. we're going to let you see how Sid eats. He actually uses his hands similar to the way that we use our hands. God created everything. If all cats looked the same, if all animals looked the same, it would be kind of boring, right? You've seen one, you've seen them all. Mm -hmm. But God made everything very different for us so that we could enjoy looking at them, interacting with them, having fun with them, and just being amazed by them. Oh, this wow. Amazing. Oh, he's so sweet. Oh, his little crunching noises are so mm -hmm. cute. Sloths in the wild will grow algae all over their body. Mm -hmm. And so they literally look like they're part of the tree. That is the only defense that they have, because as we all know, sloths are very slow. Mm -hmm. Another really cool fact about sloths, they sleep about anywhere from 15 to 18 hours 
a day. Wow, we have so much in common. I just thought that he slept that much because he couldn't handle all of his adorableness. <laughs> you just yeah. have to sleep that much when you're this cute. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh. Hi. I like how he checked you out. He went into your lap and then looked at you, made sure everything was okay. Uh, hi. They are not social with other sloths or other mm -hmm. animals, but with people, they like to hold on to us. We're warm, oh. we feel good, they mm -hmm. like to cuddle oh. and fall asleep. We're gonna keep on hanging out with Sid the Sloth and having just the best time of our life. Pop quiz with sleigh bells. In the popular Christmas song, O Come All Ye Faithful, in one stanza, how many times do you sing the words, O Come Let Us Adore Him? Is it A, two times, B, three times, C, four times, or D, never? Well, let's test it out and see. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, for the King of angels. O come, let us adore him, O come, let us adore him, O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. It's B three times. When I think about who God is, it blows my mind. I can't even conceive, I don't have the words. I'm typically someone who has a lot of words and I don't have the words to describe how much I adore him. Even that word seems too small. Adoration, it just seems like it's too tiny. It means intense love and respect. And what this song is saying is, let's take a break during the Christmas season and adore him for being such a big God. But let's not just stop with the Christmas season. Let's go all year long. Oh, come let us adore him all year long for being the incredible creator who made us and everything else. He loves us, all knowing, all powerful, all present, and all loving. Oh God, we adore you for being bigger than words. Goodness, he was just making like a little barking noise or something. <laughs> that is called a chatter. That's kind of the way they talk with each other. Oh my goodness. Aww, it's like their own little social media. It is. I love it. This is Aussie. Oh, I thought his name was Joey. <laughs> oh. Well, technically he is a Joey. That is what all baby kangaroos are called oh. when they're in the pouch. So even if they're a boy or a girl, they're still called a joey? Yes, they are. Oh. And does he have a pouch? His mommy has a pouch that he goes into. Wow. They start out the size of a bumblebee, and then they crawl up, find mommy's pouch, and go to the bottom, and for four months, all they do is drink milk and grow. Like a big bumblebee? Like a tiny bumblebee. Oh my goodness. Uh, Aussie will be about six feet tall when he stands up big. Six wow. Six feet, can he play sports? Mm-hmm. <laughs> sports? They are able to hold all of their weight on their tail and use those bottom really, really large feet to kick with. Oh, wow. wow. What do kangaroos eat? Grass, leaves, um, any type of veggies oh, you wanna eat that my... they can find. I think he thinks my sweater is grass. He eats all day long. Oh, he is okay. a grazer. Animals didn't just happen to be like they are. This guy coming from Australia, it is an island. It is surrounded by salt water. God designed him to be able to drink salt water if he needs to, instead of fresh water, Australia has a lot of droughts. There's not always a lot of water to drink. Now, my other friend, who will swim in salt water, is not designed to actually drink it. Ooh, Are I'm you so ready excited. to see the next one? Yes. yes. All right. Ori is a small clawed Asian otter. Hi. She does not live in the sea like sea otters do. She lives on the land. She does go swimming in the water, just like we enjoy swimming in the water. She does too. Oh, see, oh, wow. I, I thought that they lived in the water, but they just go recreationally. Yes. That's fun. And to look for food. Oh. So I've heard that otters will hold hands. Oh, they will. When they're floating on their back, is that so they don't lose each other? It is. Oh. So because they will sleep while they're floating. Yeah. And will they only do that with like their significant otter? <laughs> They do tend to break off into pairs, you know, just okay. kind of like we do. And they raise families together, so you have an extended family. You'll have a mom and dad. The brothers and sisters will help take care of the new babies. You'll oh. notice God gave them these little hands that are extremely flexible and mm -hmm. nimble. Uh, in the wild, they will eat mollusks and clams, things that they have to break open. It, oh what? Gosh. Without even watching like a YouTube mm -hmm. tutorial, they can just <laughs> do it. How old is um, Dory? Dory is just two years old. Wow. So she is kind of like the teenager stage right now. Oh. Do teenage otters get acne as well? They don't get acne, they get an attitude. Oh. <laughs> just think about all the time God put into designing these animals. I think it's so great that God created these animals and they are so intricate and so 
unique and they're designed to live in all these different places and all these different elements and if God spent this much time on the animals like how much more time do you spend on us who you know the Bible says that we were created in his image and I love the fact that he created these animals for us to love on them and take care of them and cuddle with them <laughs> God loves the world that he created. God loves everything in it. He loves candy. He loves bright lights. He loves singing. Da, da, da. 